In this video, we're going to look at solving inequalities using algebraic notation or by hand. So we'll have a couple of real life examples. Then we're going to explore why when we divide or multiply both sides by a negative, we need to change the direction of the inequality sign. Okay. Then we will look at a real life example to prove why that is the case, that you change direction. Um, here's some examples to do. Also, we'll be doing uh, 28 and 30 from the text, exercise 36 and 48 from the text, and we'll do one more real-life example at the end. Okay. So, let's begin. If we have... Um, if your wage is $10 per hour, that means your wage is 10 times the number of hours you work, isn't it? So if you work 40 hours, you get $400. So you could say y equals 10x. That would be an equation describing your wage, where y is wage, x is number of hours. And we could come up with this inequality. What if we wanted our wage to be more than $400, okay? If you want your wage to be more than $400, you, would re you could replace wage with the expression 10x. So you replace wage with an expression in terms of number of hours, solve the inequality, and sure enough, we divide both sides by 10, we get x is greater than 400, or <laughs> 40, right? So if you work more than 40 hours, your wage is above $400. If you want your wage to be, if your wage is to be less than, say, $550, we could go 10x less than 550, divide both sides by 10, and we would have x is less than 55, right? So if you work less than 55 hours, you get less than $550. What if we had this? Wage is $7.75 per hour plus $32.50 for expenses. So you're given $32.50 for uh, commuting or for your uh, lunch or whatever. So your wage would be $7.75, right? Times the number of hours you work times the number of hours plus this is what this is a be, a, a bonus a benefit 3250 okay so your wage could be written if you let x be number of hours your wage would be 775 times the number of hours you work plus the bonus of 3250 or the benefit okay now let's say we want our wage to be, what do you think, um, more than $400 per week in this job. How many hours do I need to work to get more than $400 per week? So in place of wage, I can put this expression, the 775x plus 3250, and write that greater than 400. Now if I solve that equation, I'll know how many hours I need to work um, to get more than $400. And it's real easy. You just solve it exactly like you want, would an equation. So subtract 3250 from both sides. And you'll be left with 775x is greater than this minus this. And get out your calculator. So we should have 7.75x is greater than 36750. And to get x by itself, divide both sides by 775. Okay, and you simply get x is more than 47.4. So you need to work more than 47.4 hours, approximately, in this job for your wage to be more than $400. Okay, so in real life, inequalities are probably more uh, useful than equations. Because you often want to know when is something more than something, when is something less. Okay. And as you can see, we're solving inequalities exactly like equations. So they're not to be afraid of. Just keep putting down the inequality sign and just solve it as if you have an equal sign there. Okay? Until, and there's one difference, and that is, 
for some reason, <coughs> when we divide or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we must change the direction of the inequality sign. And that's the only difference. Let's explore why that is. Let's take negative 6. Negative 6 is less than 10, isn't it? Okay. So if we have this inequality, is this a true statement or is this a false statement? This is a true statement, isn't it? Okay, let's do something. Let's add 2 to both sides and see what we get. Add a number to both sides. We have negative 4 on the left-hand side, 12 on the right, which is less. That is less than that. And you'll notice that the, the point always goes beside the small number. The gap goes beside the big number. So point beside the small number, gap beside the big number. Let's do this again. Negative 6 is, six is less than 10. What if we subtract 18 from both sides? Okay, we're subtracting a, num a number from both sides. What do we get in the left-hand side? Negative 24, okay, on the right-hand side. 10 positives and 18 negatives make 8 negatives, don't they? Which is lesser. Think about a number line. Here's 0, here's negative 8, here's negative 24. Which is lesser, negative 24 or negative 8? Well, negative 24 is to the left, so that's less. Okay, so that's a smaller number. Okay, lesser number. Uh, negative 6 is less than 10. Let's divide both sides by positive 2 and see what happens. Dividing by a positive number, on the left-hand side we get negative 3. On the right-hand side we get 5. So which way does the sign go? Again, this is less. Negative 3 is less, isn't it? So it goes like that. Negative 6 is less than 10. Now, divide both sides by negative 2. Write down what you have and where the sign should go. What way should the sign go in this case? Negative 6 over negative 2 is positive 3. Negative over negative, positive. Positive over negative is negative, so 10 over negative 2 is negative 5. Now, which way should the sign go? this way, right? Because negative 5 is lesser than 3, okay? It's less than, or 3 is greater than negative 5. So when we divide both sides by a negative number, we need to change the direction of the inequality, okay? Now that's only for dividing by a negative or multiplying both sides by a negative. For example, if we had, say, negative 2, that's less than 3, okay? Now multiply both sides by negative 1 and see what happens. On the left-hand side, you would get positive 2. On the right-hand side, negative 3. So would you change the direction of the sign? Yeah, because 2 is more now, isn't it? 2 is greater than negative 3. Okay. So again, let's just go over this. And we'll usually just be dividing by a positive or a negative. So um, let's just go over. If you had, say, 8 is greater than negative 12, Okay, divide both sides by positive 4, see what happens. Divide both sides by negative 4, see what happens. 8 over positive 4 gives 2, negative 12 over positive 4, negative 3. Which way does the sign go? 2 is greater, so the sign stays the same. So divide by a positive, the sign stays in the same direction. And when we divide by a negative number, we get negative 2 here, and on the, the right-hand side, it's negative over negative, positive 3. So this time, the negative 2 is less. So when we divide by a negative number, we change the direction of the inequality, okay? Uh, let's just have a look at a real-life example. If we had a prepaid coffee card, okay, and... Each coffee costs $2, and the initial value is $10. We would be able to write the value left is equal to 10 minus 2 times the number of copies. Does that make sense? Right? 10 minus 2 times number of copies. So, for example, if you had... If you had two coffees, the value on the card would be 10 minus 2 times 2 
10 minus 4, 6 dollars left, right? If you had one cough, if you had um, five coffees, the value left would be 10 minus 2 times 5, 10 minus 10, 0 dollars left. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's have a look at this. If we um, put x in place of number of coffees, the value is 10 minus 2x. Now, what if we want to solve value less than or equal to $4? If your value is to be less than or equal to $4, your number of copies must be at least what? So if the value of the card is to be less than or equal to $4, your number of copies must be at least, what do you think? Write down the answer. Well, at least three, isn't it? Because if you had three copies, your value would be exactly 10 minus 3, 2 times 3 is 6, so 10 minus 6 is 4. If you had three copies, your value would be 4. If you had three, four, or five copies, copies your value would be less than or equal to four dollars okay so that's this is what we, what we want to come up with as our answer when we do the algebra let's replace value with the expression 10 minus 2x okay and solve for when that is less than or equal to four we'll need to subtract 10 from both sides to get negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 6 Remember this negative sign comes down. Okay. Divide both sides by negative 2. And when we divide by negative, we get x on the left, 3 on the right, and we need to change the direction of the inequality. So our answer is x is greater than or equal to 3. And it is definitely saying the number of copies must be more than or equal to 3, or in other words, at least 3. Okay. And so we got the right answer. Okay, so let's just do some um, examples. If you had negative 3x um, plus 2 is less than or equal to 5, go ahead and solve that. And again, just imagine it's an equation. You're, you're solving it like an equation. So subtract 2 from both sides and you would get negative 3x is less than or equal to 3. Divide both sides by negative 3 and we have x is we divided by a negative number so greater than or equal to negative 1. So when we subtracted from both sides the inequality stays the same direction but when we divide by negative it changes direction. Okay. Uh, let's try um, 4x plus 3 is greater than 7. Solve that. Subtract 3 from both sides. On the left you get 4x is greater than 4. So when we subtract from both sides, the inequality stays the same direction. But now divide by positive 4, what happens? You've got x here, 1 here. How does the inequality sign go? When you divide by a positive number, it stays the same direction, okay? <clears throat> um, how about this? 5 minus x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So we can subtract 5 from both sides and we get not x but negative x on this side is greater than or equal to and 8 negatives and 5 negatives make 13 negatives now what do we do with this? it's negative x isn't that negative 1x? the coefficient is negative 1 so x has been multiplied by negative 1 so to get by itself divide by negative 1 on both sides and we get x is and we divided both sides by negative so less than or equal to 13 okay So that's how we solve. Now the question is, how do we check our answer with these things? Um, well, let's see. If I plug 13 in here, I'll get 
5 minus 13 on this side, which is negative 8. So the left-hand side is the same as this side, so negative 8, negative 8. And I made sure to, the, the, to change direction when I divide it by a negative, so my answer is going to be correct. Um, you could also think about this. Uh, in your homework, you're supposed to put these on a line graph and as an interval. So if we think about less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 13, we could just do a line graph like this. This is negative infinity. This is positive infinity. Um, less than or equal to 13 is 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, all these numbers here and everything in between. It could be 13, so we put the square bracket on any number less than 13 are all these numbers here, and it goes all the way to negative infinity, okay? Um, as an interval, that's minimum, comma, maximum. Min, comma, max. The minimum number in the, on this line graph in this set is negative infinity. Okay? The maximum number is positive infinity. Er, the maximum minimum number is negative infinity. The maximum number is 13. 13 is included, so square bracket infinity never is because we never actually get there. It's too, you know, you can't reach negative, negative infinity. So you always have parentheses by that and square bracket by 13. So you should have reviewed your previous uh, section to to brush up on your uh, line graphs and intervals. I'm not going to go into them in detail in this video. It'll take too long. Okay. So how do we check our answer? We plug 13 in. We got negative 8 here, negative 8. But how do we know it's less than or equal to 13? Well, we said if we divide by negative, we change direction. That's good. Also, if you think about if you plug in, say, 12, uh, then on the left-hand side, we have, we have 5 minus 12 which gives negative 7. Is that greater than or equal to negative 8? It is, isn't it? Because this is lesser. So that actually worked. So if you plug in any of these numbers, they should all work in this equation. Okay? So let's have a look at a couple of exercises. We could look at uh, 28 and 30. So exercise 28, 0 is less than or equal to 3 minus 3x, okay? We want to get the x by itself on one side of the inequality. And what we need to do is look at the operations applied to x. We have a 3 been multiplied by it, and also we have a 3 over here. What does this mean? Well, this subtraction sign is the same as adding negative, okay? So remember, you know, 10 minus 4 is the same as 10, 10 plus negative 4, isn't it? 10 minus 4 is 6. 10 plus negative 4 is also 6. So subtraction can be written plus negative. So we can think of this as if you want to write out 0 less than or equal to 3 plus, you know, negative 3x. So x has been multiplied by negative 3, and then 3 has been added. So the first thing to do is Subtract 3 from both sides. That's the easiest thing to do, okay? And you get negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 3x. Now get x by itself. Divide by negative 3 on both sides. Negative over negative positive. 3 over 3 is 1. And we divide it by a negative, so change the direction of the inequality. Negative over negative positive. 3 over 3 is 1, so that's 1x, okay? Now, do you think you leave your answer like that, or do you think you need to put the x on the left-hand side? Because we always read from left to right, don't we? You do need to put your x on the left, okay? x on the left-hand side, and it's x, if you read from here to here, in this direction, start here, x is less than or equal to 1, right? x is less than or equal to 1, okay? And then do your um, line graph and your interval, okay? So I'll, I guess I'll just do this one more example with a line graph and interval. After that, you need to figure them out yourself. So from negative 1 to negative infinity. X represents all numbers less than or equal to 1. So in other words, you know, a half, 0, negative a half, all these numbers. 
including one. So square bracket on the one. And all these numbers less than one, all the way to negative infinity. The interval is min, comma, max. It's the set of numbers between the minimum and the maximum number. This set of numbers here, the minimum is kind of negative infinity. Okay, the maximum is one. One is included. Negative infinity is not because we never actually reached negative infinity. It's you can't reach infinity. Okay, so this is your interval. This is your line graph, and the rest of them you'll have to figure out yourself. And we've covered it before. Okay. How about question thirty? Negative x plus four is greater than a half x plus one. Let's do this with decimals. Negative negative x is negative one x plus four is greater than zero point five x plus one. Okay. And let's go ahead and I guess I should leave it there. Let's go ahead and um, what could we do? We could add one x to both sides if you like, and get four is greater than and 0.5 and one makes 1.5 x plus one. Now subtract one from both sides, and now we have three is greater than 1.5 x. So divide by 1.5 to get x by itself. How many dollar fifties in three dollars? How many 1.5s in three? There are two of them. So that becomes two is greater than x. Now, why didn't we change the direction of the inequality here? Because we divided by a positive number. If you divide by a positive, the inequality stays the same direction. In the previous example, when we divided by negative 3, the inequality changed direction. Now, do you think you should write that with the x on the left? Because we always read from left to right, don't we? So you should. So if you put the x on the left now, it'll be x is less than 2, right? x is less than 2. So x is less than 2, okay? Exercise 36. Uh, whoops, I guess I just did that. That was 28. I got them mixed up. Okay, that's fine. So instead of 28 that time, we actually did exercise 36. Okay, that's fine. Let's do exercise 48. Um, and there's lots of ways of solving it. My instinct would be to add 3x to both sides to keep my x's positive. But for fun, let's go ahead and subtract x from both sides just so we can divide by a negative again for one more one more go on the video. Okay, so we get 4 minus 4x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, now subtract 4 from both sides. And when, again, when we subtract from both sides, the inequality stays the same. You just get negative 4x is less than or equal to 4. So when you're subtracting from both sides, your inequality is in the same direction. Divide both sides by negative 4, and x is, we divided by a negative this time. When you divide by a negative, that's when you change direction. x is greater than or equal to negative 1, okay? And again, you know, why is that? Well, if you had negative 2, that's less than 10. If I divided both sides by negative 1, I would get positive 2 here, negative 10 here, and positive 2 is greater. So when you divide by a negative, you change direction. And that's the only time. Divide or multiply by a negative. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and that's the answer. And you've got to do a line graph or an interval also. And that almost concludes the video. I just wanted to do one more real life example because they're so much fun. And uh, they kind of really show why when you divide by a negative, you change direction. Let's take a prepaid phone card. Read the question and see what you think of it. Prepaid phone card worth $20. Calls cost 0 0.045 per minute. So that's four and a half cents per minute. Okay. So we'll imagine that this is your prepaid phone card. <clears throat> the value remaining is the initial value of $20 minus four and a half cent times the number of minutes, isn't it? Okay. Now for the value to be over $13, 
the number of minutes used must be more than or less than what? Can you write down the answer immediately? Maybe not. Maybe you can. But, you know, algebra helps us solve these seemingly difficult problems. Okay? They're actually not that bad. Value remaining is 20 minus 0. Point. If we replace number of minutes by x, we'll have 20 minus 0. 0.045x. Okay? We want our value to be over 13, so to be more than 13, right? Over, more than. So we want 20 minus 0.045x to be greater than 13. So if we go ahead and solve that inequality, we'll be able to answer this question. If your value is to be more than 13, the number of minutes used must be more than or less than what? Hmm, let's see. Subtract 20 from both sides. You'll probably figure it out by now. But in any case, let's do it. Negative 0.045x is greater than. We subtract from both sides. and Inequality stays the same way. And we have negative 7. Okay. Then we get out our calculator because we've got to divide both sides by negative 0.045. So, negative 7 divided by negative 0 0.045, press enter, and we get x is, we divided by negative on both sides, so change direction, less than 155.5, uh, 5 and so on. So, approximately 1.5. Five, oh, we'll just do that, 0.56, how about that, okay? Or actually, x is minutes, so how about we'll round it to um, less than 1 point, or, sorry, 155 point, uh, round it to 6 minutes, okay? <clears throat> One, 155.6 minutes. So what it's saying is for our value to be more than $13, the number of minutes used must be more than or less than? Obviously, less than. Less than. 155.6. Isn't that funny? And that makes sense, isn't it? For your value to be more than $13 on the phone card, if you want your value to be more than that, the number of minutes used must be under, must be less than 155.6. Okay? So there again is the magic of algebra.